If you look, for example, at the Sahel region, it's not lost on you that you see countries like Nigeria, you see countries like Burkina Faso, you see countries like uh, Libya. And so if you go north of Libya, you would, I mean, or if you go north, I mean, up north, countries um, such as, even from Algeria, mm -hmm. they've experienced a lot of terrorism. Okay. But what we're beginning to see, which then funnels into the problems or the agile um, uh, discord in all this matter is that the threat, that the threat is actually veering downwards. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and that is the concern and the worry. You remember the Grand Bassam beach yeah. attack on Côte yeah. d'Ivoire? Yeah. And so we're beginning to see a picture in which even though a Sahelian terrorist activity is festering, the true objective of terrorists is to access the sea. Okay. And so for those of us, for those of us that are a littoral state. In other words, we're coastal states. We have a concern. Mm. There's a reason to be concerned and a reason to be worried. Okay. Because they need to have these countries that have made mention of whether you are dealing with, on top of how do you call it, Ghana, your Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. top of Burkina Faso, you have um, Mali, on top of Mali, you have Libya, you have Mauritania. These are landlocked countries. Mm -hmm. These are landlocked countries. They need access to the sea. For transport, you talked about, I, I saw you describe the issues about human trafficking, arms trafficking, drug trafficking, transnational, transnational criminality, mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things. These feed into AML activity, money laundering activities yeah. that support terrorism. So the sea and those who line the sea are definitely within the pathway of actors. And that is why maritime terrorism suddenly becomes such an important mix. But, but the, countries along yes, this um, yes. coastal lines, do you get a sense that we are taking this threat seriously Absolutely. as we ought to? I think so. And I mean, and not for less with a country like Ghana. Okay. And so for us, I mean, the integration project has been a big thing right from the time we had our independence, that our independence has a meaninglessness mm -hmm. unless we link it up with African, the African resurgence, African liberation and African, mm -hmm. you know. So it is to be found, for example, that if you look at the, um, if you look at the Accra Initiative mm -hmm. launched in Ghana, but which bestrides a number of coastal states I mean, a number of African states, you know, it's aimed at make, strengthening the terrorism governance pace and giving us a stronger position. Mm -hmm. we're, so we're not sitting down waiting to be struck. I mean, you've seen all the countries we've been struck. The question, yeah. therefore, is that, but why hasn't Ghana experienced it? It's, it's, an, it, it's a pointer to a lot of the work that the security services are doing, whether it's you're dealing with defense intelligence, you're dealing with national security, and uh, you're dealing with um, uh, policing or you're dealing with enforcement institutions. Mm. And I not mean, because we may be a safe haven for these activities, for which reason maybe we are not, we've not I been can't, a I can't, I can't say because we're a safe haven. I mean, mm -hmm. the point is that if, if, if you're a safe haven and you offer an attractive destination, shouldn't you experience something that is also anarchic, okay. you understand? Mm -hmm.